Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And if this is your first time seeing me, hi, I'm Brie, and I am super happy to have you here. And I also want to say happy August because today as I'm filming this, it is August 3rd, and it's hard to believe that uh, summer has basically come and gone. However, I am excited to bring in some cooler weather. I'm not a fan of the heat. Um, and it's really really muggy and just like humid and sticky out here in New Jersey um, So yeah, I'm just ready for some cooler weather, but I did not come on to talk about the weather today I actually am excited to talk about what I actually do as a software engineer I know that sometimes I make videos about my tips and tricks and maybe like some experiences that I've had But I don't think I've ever actually really talked about what it is that I do in my current role So I'm super excited to talk about about that today. So let's get into it. So before I start, I just want to say that I really like watching these types of videos. So if you also work in tech, I would love for you to leave a comment and let me know what you do. I think the fun thing is um, I could ask like a hundred different software engineers what they do and every single person would have a different uh, technology stack that they use and they would also have different applications for how they use that technology. So I just think it's fun to know what other people are doing and what other applications everyone is working on. So I do like watching these kinds of videos because it sort of gives me that idea, but also um, I wanted to make one of my own because I think that a lot of the ones that I've seen, people are full-time employees for the companies that they um, complete actual work for and my role is a little bit different. I'm actually a contractor. So the company that I work for full-time and when I say full-time I mean like the company that uh, provides my salary and my benefits and everything like that. That is one company but the like when I program and the work that I complete and everything like that is actually for a different company. So uh, my, I'll call it my parent company, is um, a contracting company that is pretty big, I would say all over the world. At least they have a worldwide presence, uh, but they are headquartered in India. And I was hired with them about two-ish years ago um, once I completed my stint with Remtur. And uh, when I was hired with them, my role was a full stack developer because at Revitur I had experience in back end development, front end development, and very, very minor, I would say, DevOps. And since I was uh, going into a contracting company, that those skills lend themselves very well to clients who need front end, back end, or like a combination of both. Um, and it makes me uh, more marketable, I would say, than somebody who might only have a skill set that's in front end or back end. So overall, if you are unfamiliar with how a contractor client relationship would work, um, just super, super quickly, it is basically a company that provides resources in the form of talent. So I would be a version of talent that they are providing their client, which are other different companies uh, who require technology but don't necessarily want to hire from within their own company for whatever reason. Sometimes it is more cost effective to have somebody from a different company come in and complete a project and then that's it and they can go on their way. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's for like a variety of different reasons but basically, like I said, I when I complete my work, it's not going to my parent company. The actual work that I complete is going to a different company. So the client that I work for is very, very large um, and headquartered here in the Philadelphia area. And it's an extremely large telecommunications company. And if you live in the US, I promise that you have heard of them. So uh, I've been with this client for the two projects that I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, uh, one of them was in South New Jersey, which if you watched my day in the life video, my last one that I posted, um, that was my first project and I sort of talked about how I was a front end developer for most of it and some of that hasn't really changed. But I did have a project change where I moved offices basically, but I'm with the same client and the physical work that I'm doing is different. Um, so my team is blended of people who are contractors as well from the same parent company that I'm from and also full-time employees from uh, our client basically. 
And it's a really funny dynamic because we have our on-site people um, who would technically be going to the office in Philadelphia. However, I have been attending this office right behind me because of COVID and all that fun stuff. Um, but we also have people who are working who are overseas in India as well. So I think the cool thing is for most of the day, minus a few hours, there's always somebody who is available to work on the application. So it basically provides a lot of support in case something does go wrong. So I was hired as a full stack developer. Um, however, I have been able to work my way up a little bit and now my title is a senior software engineer. And I know that's like super, super ambiguous and very general, but like I said, it helps to have a more general title. That way you can conform to whatever your client's needs are. So one thing I noticed uh, once I started working, I would say is, once people see that you are very good at something, they want you to continue to do that thing. And that's sort of where I am. So my past project, my first project with this client was a front-end development project where I was only strictly doing um, front-end development for some of their internal systems. Now that I have switched to a different project, I am still completing mostly uh, front-end development, but this application is something that millions of people use and it has a lot of eyes on it. Coming into this, it was really, I would say scary. So I work on a team that manages and creates new functionality for an email application. Basically on this app, you can see your email, uh, look at your voicemails or call history if you have a, a landline with this company or if you have other mobile phone numbers that are linked to your account and I mostly work on the what I would call the voice side which is being able to view and manipulate your voicemail um, your phone settings see who's called you and uh, basic functions like that so this project is not only working in managing this application but also we've been migrating the application from an AngularJS architecture to a React architecture. And I think it's super funny when I look back on the past year that I've basically like been on this project, because when I came into this company, I knew Angular 2 plus, um, and I sort of had to adapt to the older AngularJS style and completely learn React from the ground up. Uh, but it wasn't too, too difficult, I would say. And I think that this is a testament to understanding that you don't have to know every single framework to be successful um, on in your job. So for instance, uh, sometimes people on their job applications or the job descriptions might say that they would like React. Uh, but if I only know Angular, that doesn't mean that I won't be able to perform and excel uh, by using React. A lot of the principles are the same and the implementation is just a little bit different. But of course, React uh, does things, some things a little bit differently than Angular. But um, again, like you'd be able to pick up easily on them even if you knew one of those single page application frameworks. So. Uh, basically, I am in the process of migrating uh, different components, like I said, from AngularJS to React, but also the other half of that is improving the user experience overall, and accessibility has been something that is very, very uh, handy. Uh, we definitely need it, especially for a communications application. Everybody needs to be able to use it. Um, I would say previously, I hadn't put too much emphasis on accessibility, but since being in this role, it has definitely taught me the importance of it and making sure that everybody can use an application regardless of how they're using it. So I would say on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I basically use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, and like I said, React. Um, I also do a lot of unit testing as well, but I have not really used a lot of my backend knowledge since I have started with this company. And what I realized recently as I've sort of been evaluating and determining what my next steps, not only in my career, but in life will be, is 
I would really like to get back to full stack development where I have the opportunity to work on both front end systems and back end systems. It's not that they're saying that I can't work on their back end systems uh, or that they're restricting me sort of, but they really just need somebody to help with this project right now, which is uh, migrating everything from AngularJS to React. So yeah, um, that is basically what I do, at the long-winded version, as a software engineer and some of my pros and cons of working as a contractor. In the future, I would like to switch things up. I don't like to get too complacent um, because then I feel like I'm not pushing myself as hard as I can be and I'm excited for changing some things up. So who knows, maybe in one year I'll be making this video and it will be completely different and that's that's what I'm hoping for. I would definitely love to work on some new technology. But yeah, so if you guys have any questions about what I do or if I didn't cover something or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I can't wait to see you all in my next video. Bye.